So that was my introduction, but hers is much better. The guest that we have with us It's not is, better or worse. We are now going to talk, right? So it's we can't truly be, special. We have to be at levels. Yes, so they said fireside chat, and I thought, how could you have a fireside chat when I'm sitting with this it's big freezing, movie star? Freezing cold. Freezing cold. Freezing room. As freezing opposed cold to, yeah. and a beautiful movie star. Uh, so, Sharmila Tagorji started her career when she was 13. And today, I'm not allowed to say age, but I, no, no, okay. I, I presume she must be in her 70s, but she's still going strong. So there really has to be something special about a woman who's been able to do this consistently for over 50 years. So a special secret here. Um, I grew up in the US, and I knew no other language but English. And when we came back to India, they said, you know, you have to learn Hindi. You have to learn at least Tamil or Telugu. So they took me to a Hindi movie, Aradhana. And I didn't know a word of Hindi. But I went back and I just loved the movie. And I've been watching Hindi movies ever since. And I understood the story because your acting was so brilliant. And it's, you know, you never remember uh, her name because in whatever movie she's acted in, the Sharmila Tagore comes on so strong. And that's, and I don't know whether truly, that's a compliment or no, not. No, no, it because, is, it is. Because it you're is, supposed to, to play the... I'm sorry to interrupt, but I just want to say there, because uh, at that time when Aratna was released, uh, there was a huge protest oh. about Hindi mm -hmm. in uh, Chennai. Some of you will remember. So uh, there was a kind of Hindi boycott. And yet, Aradhana ran for 50 weeks. Yes. It was the RRR of our time. So, <laughs> so, yeah. So, it just shows, as you were saying, without knowing the language. Yeah. And uh, uh, emotions do transcend do. language. And uh, our films, when they're shown irrespective of the region, um, in the same place, people laugh. In the same place, people cry. Same place, people get bored. So our commonalities far exceed our differences. Truly. So that was the point I was trying to truly, make, that despite truly. the boycott, Aradna made, uh, you know, no, I think it so made a significant yeah. impact. And as uh, Ram Charan's mother-in-law, I have to say that you know, watching it from that point at that time, it really transcended boundaries. So, because, you know, uh, a picture is more valuable than a thousand words, let me introduce Sharmila Ji with a short clip. I think Aima has a wonderful... Sharmila Tagore, the great great grand niece of poetic genius Rabindranath Tagore, Sharmila was born on 8th December 1946. This Bengali actress achieved success at a young age. She started her career with Satyajit Ray's Apur Sansar. After appearing in a number of Bengali classics, Sharmila jumped to Hindi films, establishing herself as a lead right from her first film, Kashmir Ki Kali with Shami Kapoor. Her intense performances opposite superstar Rajesh Khanna made her one of the most wanted and desired actresses of her time, including Aradhana, Amar Prem, Avishkar, Safar, Dag, and Shoti Bahu. Since then, Sharmila became the highest paid actress in Bollywood. Her unmatched acting talent and versatility were evident in her roles. After having acted in a number of successful films, Sharmila married the Nawab of Batori Mansoor Ali Khan in 1969. Sharmila returned back to films with Gulzar Sahab's Mossam and won a national award for her role in the same. Recently, she did a few character roles in films like Ek Lavya, Virud and Break Ke Baad. In the year 1997, Sharmila was presented the Filmfare Lifetime Achievement Award and the Padma Bhushan in 2013. Sharmila is a popular veteran actress, a true diva and one of the most influential trendsetters of the film industry. क्या उसकी जिसने तुम्हें बनाया 
How beautiful is that? I have to correct a few things there. I know, you know, this Google I know is very, um, can't criticize it because it's the, you know, everybody's Google educated these days. But unless and until you correct, I mean, I was not born in, I would love to have, I mean, decrease my age by two years. I was born in 44. And I got <laughs> December 44. And then I got married in 68, not in 69. So one of you should change that in the, <laughs> in that thing. Yeah. So at least I think we have some, a few facts correct. You started at the age of 13, uh, a beautiful Bengali moving from, you know, pure art with Satyajit Ray to working with Shakti Samantha. And, and I think, you know, different levels of, of artists where you showed yourself as an artist and continue to show that, that part of you, which is very special. But you move to a level of sophisticate in, in, with an evening in Paris. And, and I think it's been quite remarkable, the evolution of Sharmila Tagore as an actress. So how do you see that balance between, you know, the expectations of what the audience wants from you and what you do as an artist and how you would like to project yourself? Well, the honest truth is that uh, the script is paramount. You know, the when you hear the script, you know the what kind of role you're playing and then what speaks to you. And uh, most of you will be surprised today, Indian film has um, come a long way. And uh, there's so much that has improved in the industry. But when we started, uh, some of you will be surprised to know we didn't even have a script. Somebody would uh, give us a narrative, you know, would tell us uh, this is what the story is about. And then we took it from there. And since the money was also not in place, uh, barring Raj Kapoor, barring uh, Shantaram, B.R. Chopra, and I'm perhaps forgetting a few other names, of course, the South was always far ahead of us. But... Uh, Movies took a long time to make. Um, and also, we didn't have that many theatres. So, again, let's say a Dilip Kumar or a Raj Kapoor or Devanand film was ready. And Anupama would not uh, get a release for a very long time. So, everything was quite different. So, when you talk about a role and audience's expectation... And right when we start, uh, we just want to act and, you know, pay our rent and just get a few, you know, get noticed and sign a few films. And then perhaps you um, are in that position to pick and choose. But right at the beginning, you just take what comes along. But in, to that extent, I would say I was very fortunate which, of course, I didn't realize. You know, when you're young and things come to you, um, you don't realize what's happening. Like when Shruttajit Rai introduced me to the world of cinema at the age of 13, I don't think I quite appreciated that. Now, when I look back and think of that, and I wonder, what would I have done? It was obviously something accidental. Somebody saw me, or I don't know, it's quite a mystery to me. But the fact is that I did that film, and I did get noticed by the world. So, you know, it opened so many doors for me. I'm so grateful. But I think that time I was quite blase. At the age of 13, I had no idea what, who Shottajit Rai was, uh, how famous he was. I was a school-going girl. I was, somebody told me that you're working there. So I went there, did my shots, came home, carried on with my school. So you know what I'm trying to say. Then later, so that moment arrived when I did Evening in Paris. And uh, my bikini shots were, uh, became kind of uh, shocking and uh, whatever the, uh, the, 
public at that time, including the industry, were very shocked at this image. And questions were asked in Parliament, I believe. So it became quite a thing. So that uh, an Evening in Paris was released a little later, although it looks very innocent compared to what kind of films we see today. But uh, uh, <laughs> I remember there was a poster in front of, I stayed in Carmichael Road, and on the way home, my mother-in-law was coming to town. So I got my driver and the bearers to go and take down that poster in the middle of the night. <laughs> Not realizing that there might be other posters in other places in the city, uh, starting from the airport. But that point is when I felt that a glamorous image is all very good, but uh, it's uh, skin deep. So I think if I want to make a place in, want to be taken seriously, I have to do more than that. And uh, very fortunately, Aradhana arrived at that time, which I signed. And from then on, consciously, I was choosing my script. And of course, you know, we sometimes work ob obviously for money. Then sometimes when we get a good role, money is no consideration. And uh, sometimes to help a friend when you're in a position to do that. But keeping all that in mind, I was, because after uh, Aradhana came Amar Prem, then there was Avishkar, there was Mausam, there was Griha Pravesh. There was quite a lot of films that spoke to me. Um, uh, Namkeen. So these films have stayed on. And uh, so I managed to take myself beyond glamour and make a, to create a kind of goodwill amongst people. Because let's say glamour is not forever. I mean, you're very attractive and the world go crazy about you. But after a while, somebody else will take that place. So I think to, um, so yes, to give a long answer to your short question <laughs> is that's when I felt that I should be more script conscious. I think you answered my second question as well, because everyone was asking about the bikini shot, but I think you, you really explained I don't it. think, like my husband one day, I think uh, Karan Johar had uh, become the editor for one week or one day or something, and my bikini photograph was in the front page of the screen. So my husband said, well, I don't think you'll ever get past that. <laughs> so I think it's there, so might as well. Well, it's there. Own it. Oh, you truly own it. In uh, No, no, now people look at it differently also. Now people think it's cult. It's people think it's a kind of liberation. Yes. I mean, there's many interpretation out there because when you are, you are just one person doing one thing mm -hmm. and sometimes it is just one film. But when that film is over, it becomes everybody's film. And okay. everybody has a take on that. So... So people interpret and see, and today's generation is looking at it very differently than uh, then, 50 years ago. So post that in 1975, you won an award for Mausam, which, which, you know, I think you answered in your earlier question, where you acted because you, you chose the role. I think you liked what you represent. So why did you do Mausam? Um, I... I at that time, Gulzar Saab was making hmm. very good films. A lot of adaptation from Sharad Chandra, ah. you know. Um, so I was very keen to work with uh, Gulzar hmm. Saab. And this role gave me the opportunity to be somebody that I'm not at all. Yeah. With uh, that kind of language and smoking a bidi and, you know. So um, that was mainly the reason why I accept it because it gave me an opportunity to perform and uh, and and what I really loved about 
the character of the sex worker is that uh, she doesn't, uh, I mean, she's not a victim. She has a sense of self and she has agency. Mm. So that is what I liked about her. She's not apologetic about what she's doing. So that, that made the role special for me. Yes, I think um, truly respect for, for what a woman does mm -hmm. in different roles. Um, in the beginning of this uh, century, I think it was 2007, 2009, you were on the National Board of Film Certification. And, and I think with all the experience that you had in movies, uh, what would you say was your contribution to, to the way Indian movies changed? Um, I don't think I make a, you can't single me out oh. as the change. Um, it's actually the audience, uh, audience and our film is, uh, is connected. So as and when the society changes, our movies change because we are a reflection of their taste, the audience's taste, what audience would like to see. It's a, uh, after all, it's a commercial industry. So we want the audience to come and see our film. Um, there are some people who, of course, make uh, different kind of films, which are where cons commerce is not the consideration. But uh, most of us are there because it's a, it's a commercial industry. So, um, when I would say the significant change came, I mean, I can do a quick uh, recap of our film industry. Because earlier were the studio days when they made, uh, there was one in new theaters in, uh, I mean, I don't know whether you'll get bored with this, it'll take a little while. <laughs> it was in new theaters in, uh, in Kolkata and Prabhat Studios in Pune and Bombay Talkies in uh, Bombay. And they were making these very, very forward-looking films like Achyut Kanya, Dunya Na Mane, which, I mean, the name Achyut also we will not allow uh, as a title of the film today. Um, and very, very forward-looking. And those films not, didn't necessarily run what ran was the mythological and the devotional films that these studios were also making. So they balanced that with this. So after that came the war, um, everything changed, black money entered the uh, system, the star system came. Before that, Ashok Kumar was the star, and then came Dilip Kumar, uh, the partition happened, many things happened which changed the economics of the film. The studio went out and then the era of uh, Dilip Kumar and uh, Devanand and Raj Kapoor sh doing different aspects. Uh, Raj Kapoor was the tramp, uh, Devanand was the underbelly. You know, during partition so much had happened and so he was reflecting that, the, the underbelly, the crime aspect of the country. And then, uh, of course, Yusuf Saab, the conflicted person between this and that. And then came the 60s when uh, the Chinese aggression happened. And the, our films became completely escapist. There were six, seven songs in the film. Everybody ran to Kashmir and the village girl and the city boy romance. That was the time of Kashmir Ki Kali and many other films that happened in the 60s because the newfound euphoria of independence was waning off. There was an unemployment, grain shortage. So Hindi films reflected all that and became sheer entertainment. And then came the 70s where wonderful things were happening. The Pune Institute gave people like Nasir, Jaya Bachchan, Shabana Azmi, they all came out. 
Ankur happened. So that kind of parallel cinema was happening. At the same time, the angry young man of Amitabh Bachchan was happening, Divar, etc. And then there was Amul Palekar, Bashu Bhattacharya, Bashu Chatterjee kind of films were happening in the 70s, which was something for everybody. Then came the terrible 80s when the TV came. So then the gentry refused to go to the theater because the rats were running around. So then they modernized the theater with Dolby sound and this, that and the other to compete with TV and to bring back the audience. And they had these multi-starers, all the posters from here to there, you know, everybody there. And many rape scenes and it was a terrible time, 80s. And then 90, when the India opened up with its economy, and then we started seeing films from abroad, our audience were exposed to different kind of film. Uh, the <coughs> churning started, their appetite in increased, they were ready for different kind of films. And although at that time, a lot of people were going out to work, in our time, work was... A, Women going out to work was frowned upon. Working in film was doubly frowned upon. But in 90s, things were different. It became a wonderful profession. Uh, girls were giving up uh, going to USA for further studies and wanting to join films. And the parents were, would come to me for counseling. I mean, how do we stop them? So that era but that more and more people are going to work and more in on the films we were only showing people who were staying at home and waiting for their prince charming whether you take kuch uh, kuch hota hai or kabhi khushi kabhi gham or whatever else hum aapke hai kaun so it became the pull and push of globalization so the indian films became very traditional and very different from what was going on outside then to now. So every, we really respond to the age. Right now, our films are not doing well at all. As you know, um, nobody's going to the theater, the South Indian films. And now the films are English films, South Indian films are getting dubbed in Hindi. So people are saying, why do we have to, why can't we see the original? Why do we have to go to the theater? So people really now have to think about content. Like what, what is required right now with the OTT uh, competing? So when they know that it's going to come to OTT, why go to the theater? And the multiplex screen has completely changed the viewership, changed the viewing of the film, I would say. Because once you were all sitting together, the cheaper tickets, the expensive tickets, there was a collective experience of India. Now luxury, this multiplexes have become with their prices and popcorn and it's beyond people. So that has created, even the seats are so far apart, the luxurious bit. So it's a now you have to see the films in a different way. And uh, half of the film is in English. And uh, so it's, um, we really have to think. And that's why Gulmohar is so important because it has reflected something that everybody has loved that film. Why have they done that? Because of the script, yeah. because of something that is as basic as a family dispute or young people or three generations, wills, everybody, it, it resonates with people. I can imagine. And so, so yeah. On, uh, you know, after break ke baad, <laughs> appropriately enough, you took a, a decade off and, and you came back on, on the digital screen with Gul Mohar, which fortunately I watched last night. So shall we have that, uh, can we play a little bit of the movie before I move on to the other questions? Sure. So we have a lot of audience questions. Yes, yeah, 
So let's play Gulmohar. And, uh, and then I think this, what Gulmohar does is it gives you a view of Sharmila Tagore as she is, as she is today, a very evolved human being. And in this, she plays the role of a matriarch and plays it to perfection with, uh, with perspectives that are truly unique to her. Shall we see? तुम सबसे एक दो बातें कर रही हूँ मैंने एक छोटा सा मकान खरीदा है पॉंडिचेरी में अब मैं वही रहूंगी मैं चाहती हूँ इस बार की होली हम सब साथ मनाकर इस घर से निकले ये हमारा घर था जो हमने ईट पत्थरों से नहीं रिश्तों से बनाया था रिश्ते जो खून से नहीं Sharmila ji, you look more beautiful in real life. You also look slimmer. <laughs> it was truly a wonderful movie. I, I was fortunate enough to watch it last night. But since we have so many questions from the audience, um, let me move to a more pers personal note, which is, I think, what you were trying to emote on screen, which you did very successfully. Um, you married uh, uh, Tiger Pataudi, the Nawab of Pataudi. Uh, he was uh, a cricketer. So long before Anushka and Virat Kohli became a sensation, you did it. You were the first to do it. You married not only you know a cricketer, but I think someone from a different religion and a completely different life. So what are the? I think the question that we have here is. What are the emotional aspects of, of that relationship and, and how was it special? Uh, when you say uh, different, uh, you just said, no, different uh, culture, but that is not really true because I come from a joint family and a very old family. So to us, sharing and tolerance comes very easy because we never had a room of our own. We had many people uh, who had the authority over us, uh, you know, who could scold us or whatever. We went to sleep in somebody's bed, woke up in somebody else's bed, you know. So that was, we didn't, so that wasn't the difficult bit. And also their family was also old and also extended. So, um, so that kind of adaptation uh, or adapting was not difficult at all. But I was a rice eater and they were a chapati eater. That was a major difference. So being a Bengali, I you know, had to put my foot down. And they had no idea about fish except fried fish and um, some kind of tandoori preparation. So I had to had a serious talk with the cook. and. Uh, other than that, at an um, emotional level, it doesn't really make sense what you're saying. Because love is love at whatever. And then uh, respect is also whatever. So those emotions are just so universal. Did Tiger put out right? So that is not... Uh, but uh, when you're talking about the Hindu-Muslim thing, in Mumbai, we were completely unaware of it. Because we just announced to our respective parents that we are getting married. Then he went back to cricket and I went back to work. And it was their problem to sort it out. So in Bengal, uh, when they were organizing the wedding, uh, there were things like, bullets shall speak. So my parents were getting those kind of notes. And uh, similar things were happening here. So much so, one morning I woke up. Uh, and I was told that a couple of people from Delhi have come to see you. So I went to the sitting room and uh, two very official looking people were sitting there. They said, we've come from Delhi and we've been told that you, are in, you need our protection. So we've come to protect you. So I said, no, I, I, I think I'm all right in Bombay. I don't feel threatened at all. So I sent them packing. And which was true. I didn't feel anything. Mm -hmm. And the wedding went off peacefully. And uh, all was well. 
So the perception was that there will be some sort of a problem, but thank God it didn't happen. So did Tiger Patowdy play any pranks on you? Yeah, sorry, Tiger. He was known for being a, a prankster. Prank oh God, yes. <laughs> he was, and his mother was also. I mean, she would do all kinds of things to unsuspecting guests and, you know, much laughter after that to the person's embarrassment. So, the Tiger, I think, got it from Amma. Um, one day he came to me with a very serious face and, see, he was introducing me to, I, Bengali, I had very little Urdu. Not very little, I had none. So, he was uh, introducing me to Begum Akhtar and other things. So, one day he says, I've written this wonderful thing for you. So, I said, yes, how lovely. So, he told me. So, next day I was shooting with Feroz. And I think some of you have said this in many forums. Um, I was shooting with Feroz in Safar. We were shooting in the Mahabaleshwar. So, I said, Feroz, guess what? Tiger has written this wonderful thing for me. He said, what? I said, Dile na da, tujhe hua kya hai? Akhir is dard ki dawa kya hai? So, he said, you idiot, stupid woman. That's ghalib for God's sake. So, so thank God I only told Feroz and didn't make a public. Uh, but now, uh, so so that kind of and many others. It's just uh, that was him. So now you've made it public, but uh, you know, in um, you've been brand ambassador for UNICEF, and in that role, you know, you as an actress and a respected actress have the ability to to do so much social work. And it's probably, you know, it started with your generation and it continues. What do you think that people with uh, personalities and respect like you should do in the future in terms of contributing to society? They are, I think. Most of them have a charity. Mm. Um, I know Salman Khan does a lot. Shah Rukh Khan does a lot. Akshay does his bit. Um, so they are uh, very conscious, and most of them uh, do. And uh, also, they're giving their voice to many NGOs, even if they're like Nandita Das or Shabana. They're constantly speaking up for causes or uh, for uh, whether it's uh, maternal or infant mortality, which I do. I, we have a trust, Patodi Trust. And we uh, are, you know, burnt victims, domestic violence uh, victims. So we work closely with some and uh, acid survivors. Because being an actor, I think, uh, I mean, to me, it's, I mean, I've seen these people. I've been working with them now for the last 10 years. And there is a, I support a, uh, institution called Brave Souls. So where, uh, I mean, I've supported individual victims, but now I support this, uh, uh, where the acid survivors have come together. Somebody called Shaheen. You know, um, this another lady from Ludhiana, her husband wants to drink and she didn't give him the money. And he just threw acid. And somebody wanted to marry, and she said no. Then somebody threw acid. I mean, as stupid a reason as that, you destroy somebody's face. And if you see them, then this sort of raw flesh, and if somebody's lost their eyesight, this uh, lady who came from Ludhiana couldn't op close her mouth, and could couldn't close her one of her eyelids. So Dr. Pakrashi, a lot of people they work pro bono, and. Um, Nobody charges, but you have to pay the hospitals. Yeah. <laughs> that charge is there. Oh, so, yeah. uh, but, uh, so this eyelid had to close because if you don't close your eye, infection can set in, you know, set in. So that was important. So now you can grow your eyelashes also. There are lots of, uh, this Shaheen went to Chennai for, uh, but then she herself decided not to do because then you put something. Anyway, she decided not. So, and the, the pluck of these women, the I can't tell you how how wonderful ambassadors they are. 
And imagine just for a trivial reason, your an asset is still, uh, despite uh, so many laws, it's still easily available. So, and people still continuing to do that. So now, of course, the government is uh, giving uh, help. So our load is a little less, but the civil society also. So that is one thing I personally support. And uh, there is another institution in Chennai. So I'll tell you all about it later. Yes, yes. So they have their people in, uh, in hospitals. So the burnt victims, when they yeah. come there, they start giving them counseling. Mm. And then they also develop their is PCVC. Mm. It's a, I'll talk to you about it. It's a wonderful organization. So I think everybody should donate. To I it. know this to be true because uh, Sharmila ji just opened our genome lab where we work mostly with cancer patients. So thank you, Sharmila ji. I think, you know, all of us know the noble work you do. And we are working with acid victims, by the way. Um, so I have a question from the audience. And, and probably you'll find this amusing. But it says, the success of Natu Natu remind us that the world will, maybe we should go back to the basics and not copy Hollywood in terms of entertainment. And what is your view on that? I think I said that earlier, that mm -hmm. we need to uh, do that. And uh, also, the success of some of the films, like Kalki, as you would know, everybody in Chennai knows the story, right? It's like, a, like Mahabharat or like Ramayana. So when you make that into a film form, so people are uh, already are aware of that. So yes, we most certainly need to look at our, no, we are not making stories on published works. Uh, like earlier, people were doing of Sharachandra or whoever else. It was published work. Uh, and obviously of Indian ethos and Indian uh, sensibilities. Um, like I was talking about multiplex, we have gone too much towards the West. And, you know, and then even people who are writing in my time, they were all Urdu speaking. And my calf and gaf were, uh, you know, aap wo gyara thik se nahi bol rahe, aapka pronunciation aisa hona chahiye, kaaf ka jo hota hai, kaaf bolna chahiye, or gaf bolna chahiye. So now to there is no such thing. Everybody is actually translating, writing in English and then translating it in Hindi. And uh, the script is coming in Roman. Now, H-A-I-N is hai, uh, I mean, how do you pronounce it? I want my script in Devnagri. I don't want my script in English, Roman. So the problem is that some of our filmmakers themselves are not reading Devnagri, not, not familiar with uh, our literature, etc. So really, we need to, need to seriously look at it. And... Uh, understand what works with our people, not just the multiplex, but many people out there. You know, go to back to that single screen time. So, if there are any questions from the audience, we'd be happy to take it. Um, so, my last question to you is this. You know, the uh, women who work, they always ask us this question. How do you, how does this work-life balance happen? And, and for us, it's, you know, it is, there is never a balance. But for you, it's even more because not only is it about work life, but it's the expectation that you have for media. How do you manage your work life and expectations that you have? And we did that without cell phones. Yes. You guys have cell phones. <laughs> but actually, phones. that was easier. <laughs> <laughs> no, it wasn't. Now the people ring up and say, Wo khana idhar rakhiega. when I watch these films and these rows of women, so the, all those instructions are on the cell phone. So I don't think you should look, uh, approach, A, it is a problem. It's something that you want to do. You want to work. And then, of course, you have family. And, of course, uh, you have some obligation towards your audience. But uh, you have many people out there, and there is a single person. I. 
So I cannot cope with 20 other perspectives or expectation. So you have to be very sure that who are you and what you're going to follow. So there's no question of balance. It's just knowing who you are and doing, you know, following your own path and your own, own calling and not be uh, swayed by other people's expectation of you because they don't really know you. Even if they know you on the screen and they think they know you and I appreciate their goodwill, but they still do not know you. And uh, there is that private eye and I can't, can't ignore. And that person is constantly telling me what I need, when I need to sleep, when I need to take a break. And I must follow that voice. If I don't, I'm going to land myself into trouble. Because you can't please everyone. That's the first. So you might as well please yourself. But I learned from my granddaughter that not to fight with the social media because uh, they're there to stay. I'm not on social media. But people, when they're there, the media, you have to be nice to them. That's all. Wave at them. But you can't give can't wake up in the morning and write something about I ate this breakfast and at lunch I'm doing this and at dinner I'm doing... I mean, come on, where's 20? we've got only 24 hours in a day. So I think we need to be mindful about how we spend it. So, I think I learned a lot from you, Sharmila Ji. Um, there is really no perfect life balance, work-life balance. But the interesting thing that you said about being uniquely you, and it makes you uniquely you. Uh, in meditation, we learn that in the purest form of meditation, we focus on our breath because the breath is us. And and I and as I hear Sharmila Ji speak, you know, I do. I have understood that um, not only is she an actress, an artist, a lady with incredible grace and someone who's made a huge contribution to society in many, many ways. We've truly been privileged to have you with us this, uh, this afternoon. And, and I think, you know, we've given a lot of food for thought because there's lunch, but what a better appetizer than having you with us today, Sharmila. Thank you. And we must all look forward to the movie. Thank you. Thank you.